Have you ever stayed up at night wondering how come a word processor can very quickly identify a spelling mistake while you're typing? Or how Google can very quickly predict the word that you're about to type? Fear not, in this video we will analyze an algorithm that organizes the data so we can implement an efficient spell checker. If you like learning about algorithms, check out the link in the description. It will take you to a book called Grokking Algorithms. It's a very good introductory guide to algorithms and you will also be supporting this channel if you buy the book from the link in the description and you will get a 30% discount if you use the code below. In order to find suggestions on what a misspelled word should look like, we just need to compare that misspelling or typo to a set of similar words. This is what is known as the string distance. The most common algorithm for the string distance is what is known as the Levenstein distance. It gives you the number of steps it would take to change your input string into your target string. For example, over here, if we want to change the misspelled spelling word into the correct one, we just need to add an L at the appropriate space. So it gives us a string distance of one. One added to correct it. If we had to change it to the word spell, we would need to change the I into L and drop the N and the G. And we can calculate the string distance to every single word that we have in the dictionary. And then we could choose the one that has the minimal Levenstein distance, which in this case is the word spelling. The only problem is that languages are typically large, right? In the English language, for example, we have more than 400,000 different spellings of different words. So even for one word, if we had to repeat this whole algorithm for every single word that we have in the English dictionary, it would take a while. The situation is even worse if we have a large volume of text that we need to spell check, like a book, for example, where we have to scan through every single word and compare it to every single word in the dictionary. So in order to solve this problem, what we need is a better way to organize our words. Think about a book index. Whenever you want to look for something in a book, you don't go and read everything in a book, but you look through the index to find what you're looking for. This is the same concept. However, it's slightly trickier because we don't have the correct word that we're looking for. We have something that is slightly misspelled. This is where the concept of Qgrams come in. We build our index with what is known as Qgrams from our dictionary. A Qgram is kind of a substring of fixed length. For example, over here, I'm showing a Qgram of length three of the world spelling. So the Qgram over here would be S, P, E. And if we want to generate all the Qgrams from a string, we just need to shift this Qgram window every time, right? So we move it one to the right and we copy the next three letter string. In this case, it's P-E-L. And we can continue with this process again, always moving to the right and writing the next three character strings until we have all the Qgrams of our input string. In this example, we're using Q equals three, a Qgram of length three, but we can try with other variations like two or four or bigger Qgrams. To write this algorithm in Python is very simple. I have here a function called extract qgrams, accepting two parameters, the word and the variable q, the length of our qgram. This function will extract all the qgrams from the input word and return them in a list. The first thing we do in this function is to iterate over the input word. So we say for i in range of length of word, but we have to be careful over here. We have to stop a little bit before the end. We have to stop before the length of the Qgram because we don't want to extract Qgrams that are shorter than Q. So we subtract Q and add one. The add one is because the loops in Python are exclusive. Inside this loop, we extract the Qgram. We say word at i up to i plus Q. This will extract that window of three characters from our input string. And then we do Qgrams.append. After we extract the word, we append it to our return variable. Now that we have a way to extract the Qgrams from a string, we'd need a way to organize all of these Qgrams. This is what we will use to look for similar words. And the idea over here is that we process every single word that we have in the English dictionary and build an index of Qgrams. Over here, I have an example of just three words. Imagine our entire English dictionary was just these three words, linear spelling and selling. And we extract all the Qgrams from there. You can see them over here on the left. And what we need is to point each 
qgram to its corresponding word. For example, the qgram ear belongs to linear, the qgram lli points both to spelling and selling, and the qgram lni points to linear spelling and selling, all of the three words. Once we have processed the entire dictionary and have all the references to the words where they were extracted, we can then use them to search for our misspelled word. Let's now write a quick function to process all the words. Let's say over here the all words variable represents a list of all the words in the English dictionary. Q is our qgram length. And what we need to build in this function is this mapping between the qgram, in this example I have over here lin, pointing to a set of words that that qgram has been extracted from. So for example, for lin we would have a pointer to linear, spelling and selling because it's been extracted from those three words. The first thing we do is we iterate over every word that we have in our input. We extract the qgrams of that word and then we iterate over all the extracted qgrams and then we get all the qgrams, right? This mapping that we have at the extracted qgram and we add this particular word. This over here assumes that we have already encountered this qgram. However, if it's the first time that we're seeing this qgram, it will not be in this Python dictionary. So we need to handle when there is no entry. So what do we do? We do all qgrams at this particular qgram is equal to all qgrams.get qgram in case there is one. But if there isn't one, we just initialize an empty set. In this way, when we get to the second line, we will always have either an empty set or the existing set of that qgram. Now that we have our index, our data is organized in a way that it's efficient to query, we can get our misspelled word and look for its closest equivalent. How do we do that? Again, we extract all the qgrams from our input word. Okay, in this case, it's the example is spelling misspelled without the L. And for each qgram from our input string, we look for a match in our index. Because our data is indexed in an efficient data structure, in this case we're using a Python dictionary which is hashed, this search is very efficient. And in this particular example, our misspelled word matches all three words in our dictionary. But what we can do is rank these words by their number of matches. For example, the word linear only matches one, the qgram lin, the word selling only matches two, both lin and ing, and spelling matches four. We have also the pel and spe. So in this case, the word correctly spelled spelling is the closest match, and we should suggest it to the user as the closest match of this misspelling. And finally, let's write this algorithm in Python. This function will accept all the qgrams that we have extracted from our dictionary, the indexed qgrams, the input word that we want to check and find suggestions of the closest matches and q, the length of our qgrams. What we want to build in this function is a list of matches with a score of how close they are to our input word. So this ranking will tell us how often we match all the qgrams from the input word into a word in our dictionary. The first thing we do is we extract all the qgrams from the input word. So we call the previous function that we have implemented, passing in the variable q, and we store the output into a variable called input qgram. Then we iterate over every single qgram that we have in our input word. And next, we just need to find all the matching qgrams from our index. So we say all qgrams.get qgram, and if there isn't a match, we return an empty list. Why do we need an empty list? It's because we want to iterate over every single word in this index. Remember that the value in this particular index is the correctly spelled word that we have a match for. So for every word that we have a match, we need to update the ranking. So we say matches at word is equal to matches dot get word. And if there isn't a match already, meaning that we haven't yet given a score to this particular word, we give it a value of zero. And then we add plus one. Once we exit this loop, we have a list of matches with their ranking. We just need to sort it with the highest ranking first. So we say sorted of the matches, okay, our list of matches, by using the key of the actual ranking itself. So we say matches.get 
and we do reverse equals true because we want the highest value on top. And from the sorted list, we want to take the first 100 matches. And we can assign this to a variable called closest matches. At the end of this function, we're going to return this variable. However, we're going to do something more on top of it. We're going to sort it again. And this time the key will be a lambda function taking in the match m and we're going to do the Levenstein distance on this match with the original check word. We are doing this extra string distance algorithm on each match that we have with the original misspelled word. The reason we're doing this is because we want to narrow down further this list of matches because we have 100 words. We want to pick the top five. So we do sublist of five. This Levenstein distance algorithm can be the topic of another video, but right now I'm just using this extra library that I found for Python. But if you're interested to learn how this algorithm works, leave a comment below and it might be the topic of the next video. Let's now try out this program. I have here two more functions. One is to read all the words from a dictionary. I'm just reading it from this file over here and then I'm just loading it up and using it over here in the main part. In this program, I'm using a Q length of three. I'm using the input word again, spelling misspelled. And in the next line, I'm reading all the words from that file that we saw before, extracting all the Q grams. And then I'm going to print out the closest matches. Let's go ahead and run it. And as you can see, it gave me a very decent suggestion. It gave me the correct spelling of the misspelled word and a bunch of other suggestions. Using Qgrams is not the only way to do spell checker or word prediction. There are more advanced techniques, but using Qgrams kind of gives you an idea of how the data can be organized to do effective searching. If you like these kind of videos, please consider subscribing to the channel and check out the links in the description below as a way to support this channel.